Good morning. We're going to be looking at a series that I call Thinking About Faith. We're going to be looking at the prophet Habakkuk in this message that I've entitled The Righteous Live by Faith. So you want to have your Bible handy. You want to open to the prophet Habakkuk in the Old Testament to chapter 2, verse 4 is our uh, primary text, that one verse, as we prepare, let's take a moment and pray and give this time to the Lord. Father, we come before you, we thank you for every opportunity to enjoy fellowship, to worship you, to engage you together. Father, as we spend this time together, we pray the Holy Spirit would lead us bringing affirmation, bringing conviction as uh, we need it, um, as we consider your word. Father, we pray that uh, in every way that you would be honored and lifted up and that everything that we do would be before you for your kingdom's sake, for um, your, your servant, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, and we place it in his name. Tragedy is hard to understand. It's hard to explain, and it can be very hard on faith. People blame God for what happens, and they often become bitter toward him. They seek explanation, but get silence. They seek understanding and get none. Much of what happens in life is beyond us. We don't understand why some people have cancer. We don't understand why some are in tragic accidents. We just don't understand why some suffer heart attacks. We don't understand why some people live in constant pain while others live mostly trouble-free lives. And with all that we don't understand, we need to understand one fundamental biblical truth, God never explains himself. The events that occur in our world seldom make sense, which confronts us with the bottom line issue of Christianity. The righteous live by faith, and thinking about faith. Let me share with you a couple of things related to prophet Habakkuk, and which are appropriate for us today as Christians. First, observe an expression of faith. One of the greatest expressions of faith ever made came from the prophet Habakkuk. He lived in times that were hard on faith. He saw the righteous suffering, and he saw the wicked prospering. Most prophets spoke to the people for God. Habakkuk spoke to God for the people. He asked two questions that we often asked. Why and how long? Why are these things happening? And how long will it be before they are taken care of? Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you not hear? Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. God revealed to Habakkuk something very important. And that is that the Babylonians would be used as an instrument of judgment on the Hebrew people. And the prophet didn't understand. He just couldn't grasp it. For some time, some bad things would happen. God's hand wouldn't move. His face wouldn't be seen. And yet the correct conduct of the believer is the righteous will live by faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, our text for this message. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, 
but the just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk did realize that although he didn't understand the ways of God and he didn't agree with the plan of God, he couldn't doubt the love and dependability of God. And in response to all that, he wrote his greatest declaration of faith. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, down to verse 19, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor be fruit on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. Even if everything he relied on failed, if everything that made his life stable crumbled, he would still trust the Lord. If Habakkuk was speaking today, he might say something like, though the stock market crashes, the company goes bankrupt, and the economy heads south, if everything I rely on tumbles, still I will trust in the Lord. My confidence in God will not change. So, first, observe that expression of faith. Second, observe the importance of faith. Pain and tragedy are a pit, which often seems bottomless, producing confusion and fear. Whatever you grab for is just out of reach. Just out of reach. You only see blackness while trying to focus on the life you used to know. Many feel that God is nowhere to be found. You look down that, that tunnel and you see a light at the end of the tunnel. But then you soon find out that that light is actually from an oncoming train. Well, you get past that and you think everything's fine and the roof caves in. And well, okay, okay. And then the floor gives way. You just can't seem to grasp it. You just can't seem to get past it. And it just seems sometimes that God is nowhere to be found. But Habakkuk reminds us that even in pits of tragedy, God is still there. He is present. The pain is real. No doubt, the pain is real. The pain is real. We're not, we're not covering over that. We're not dismissing that. The pain is real. But God is also real. That's where faith comes in. Faith reminds us that in those moments between the illogic and logic, in moments of misunderstanding and understanding, between questions and answers, that we're called to trust God. And so there's there is the importance of faith. Third, I want you to see that there are also the beliefs of faith. There are certain beliefs regarding faith that we need to grasp and we need to own and make an essential, regular part of this faith walk that we are on with the Lord. And what are those beliefs of faith? Well, one is that faith believes God does not make mistakes. We view, you see, we view life as though we're watching a parade at ground level. We can only see what's immediately in front of us. But God is high above. And he sees all of life with one glance. He sees both the beginning and the end of things, we only see the present.
present. Things sometimes get clearer after the event, but while the crisis is occurring, we're usually unaware of why we're going through it. We're called to trust God, believing that he's too wise to make a mistake. On the wall of a concentration camp, a prisoner had carved these words. I believe in the sun, even though it does not shine. I believe in love, even when it isn't shown. I believe in God, even when he doesn't speak. So faith believes that God does not make mistakes. A second thing that faith believes is that God cannot be cruel. Over a marble fireplace in the mathematics building of Princeton University, written in German, is this statement. God is subtle, but he is not malicious. Whatever God does in our lives, he always does for our good. That's his children. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Listen, these verses do not say that everything that happens is good. It isn't. These verses do not say God causes everything that happens. He doesn't. These verses do not say that Everything will turn out okay for everyone. It won't. What these verses do say is that it is God's purpose to make us like his son, Jesus Christ. And to that end, he uses all things, the good and the bad, that which he causes and that which he allows. No experience is wasted if we give it to God. So faith believes that God cannot be cruel. Another thing faith believes is that God works his timetable. When we attempt to impose our agenda on God, we end up having issues. It's through struggles that we obtain strength. It's the old saying in bodybuilding, if there's no pain, there's no gain. There are times when we just want to short circuit the process. We want it over, but God wants to prepare us for a task or a new phase of our Christian life. The faith believes that God works his timetable, not our timetable. Faith also believes God is in control. It's our choice whether we let the inevitable suffering and misfortune of life to harden or to soften us. It's all about whether we live by faith or not, trusting that God is in control. So it's how we respond. Someone said that the the same sun that melts wax hardens clay. We choose to look forward or look back. We choose to be hopeful or feel hopeless. We choose to be optimistic or stay in pessimism. We let the inevitable suffering misfortune of life to either harden us or soften us. And it is all about whether we live by faith or not, trusting that God is in control. Faith believes God is in control. Faith also believes God can be trusted. Again, 
chapter 3, verse 19. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. The deer Habakkuk refers to is a kind of mountain climbing deer, which you may have seen on TV. It's known for its, its sure and steady feet. It can climb right up the side of a mountain or right up the side of, of, of a rock hill. On the most treacherous terrain, it never fails. It is sure-footed. This is the Lord's promise to us. He can be trusted. He will keep us on our feet as we move through the difficult paths of life. He may not take us out of our troubles, but he promise, promises to get us through them. Well, let me ask you, where is your faith? Maybe the issues of your life seem so dark that you can't see God's face. Maybe you wonder if God is even there. Maybe you're wondering if God cares about what's going on in your life. Well, the word of God proclaims that God is here, that he will never leave you, that he cares too much for you. Even when you can't see his hand at work, you can trust his heart of love. Do you hear me? Even though you can't see his hand, of, hand at work, you can trust his heart of love. Will you trust him? Even if you don't understand why, trust him because you know that he knows why in his plan. Will you trust him even if you wonder how long Trust him because he knows the time and he knows the length of suffering in his plan. Will you trust him because he's God? Will you put your trust in him? Do you know him as your savior? Do you know him as your Lord? Do you know him as your savior? Did you come to the place in your life where you realize that you're a sinner in need of a savior? That you are a sinner in God's judgment and that you need his forgiveness. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says that for the wages of sin is death and the free gift of God is eternal life by Christ Jesus. But you know, even though we all sin, even though we all deserve God's judgment for our sin, even though We are all loved by God. Romans 5.8 shows how God demonstrated that in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead we shall be saved for with the mouth confession is made and with our heart we believe unto righteousness and if we would call upon the name of the Lord Romans 10 13 we shall be saved do you know Jesus as your savior would you reach out and ask him to forgive you and be your savior. And if you would do that, he will forgive you and he will give you 
the hope of eternal life. If you are a believer, if you know Jesus as your Savior, are you following him? Are you surrendered to him as your Lord? Are you walking by faith, trusting him? Is he the one who's in control, in charge of your life? Or are you trying to live it under your own authority? Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your, your servant, Habakkuk. Thank you for the faith that he demonstrated, the statement of faith that he declared. That regardless of what's going on, he'll trust you. Regardless of what's going on, we are to walk by faith. Regardless of what we see with our sight, we're called to walk by faith, trusting you. And Father, may we have the grace to walk by that faith. And Father, we just commit it all to you in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.